So we're not going to do a Bible study today. But I think I might like some interaction. All right? You all okay with that? Good. All right. We can do that. You know, the, when there's this size of a church, we can do that pretty easily. And I've got to tell you, I really like that. I like hearing from you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Luke 18, verse 8. Luke 18, verse 8. Will you turn there, please? One scripture. Luke 18, verse 8. Turn there, click there, whatever you're doing. Again, the series title is A Commitment to Faith. Those of us that committed to faith last week, committed to faith to live by faith in every single area, everything we do, whether it's driving to church on a snowy, possibly icy day, getting out of bed in the morning, whatever it might be, being exposed to the coronavirus, it doesn't matter. Are you committed to faith? And when I say faith, not faith in the government, not faith in a person, faith in God. Amen. Are you committed to faith? Luke 18, verse 8, nevertheless, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he? Now, he's not writing, Jesus is not speaking to the world. He's speaking to his disciples. And I got to tell you, you know, un unfortunately, you know, in the bulk of the church, there's a lot of faithlessness. Not condemning anybody or judging anybody, it's just true. We kind of sway whichever way the world says. Now, the world doesn't have any hope. The world enters 2022 and says, wow, we got a new year. We got, oh, maybe we got some new hope. Maybe, oh, maybe things will be better. Maybe the coronavirus will be over. Maybe the government will lift some of the, some of the, uh, mandates that have been out there. Maybe all that will happen. Maybe the economy will start to go up again. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's our hope. You know, hope is just hope. It's not based in anything but possible, maybe, could happen. But we, we who are born again, we who love Jesus, enter 2022 and every single day in faith, in the confidence that we have in our God, in the confidence that He, well, you know, what can we enter, in, what do we have confidence in? Come on, talk to me. What do we have confidence in? What do we have faith in? It's 2022. Here it's a new year. We don't have just hope like the world does, right? Man, if the, we're sorry, man, we're a sorry mess if that's all we've got. What do we have confidence in? Where's our faith? You faith people? I'm a little tinny up here. Faith in God. What else? For what? For what? what, what where's, our, where's our faith placed? Confidence? Com confidence at what Jesus did on the cross? Sticks. It's cemented. It's permanent. What else? What else? What else you got faith in? Say it again, Dan. Whatever he's given, and let me add, whatever he's promised, he doesn't ever take back. It's yours. It's done. It belongs to you. It's given to you. What could that be? What could that be? What has he given? Joanne. Healings. You need healing? It's given to you. We'll talk about it more. Deliverance. Deliverance from what? All sorts of stuff. Anything that can hold you in bondage. Sin. Anything that comes from sin. What else? Gave you eternal life. Doesn't take it back, right? What's eternal life? Eternal life starts. When does it begin? Right here and right now. As soon as you're born again, eternal life starts. Bang! And all the promises of God are right now. They are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Because eternal life is ours. What else? What are, pardon? Provision. Provision. What was Always. Well, I mean, like what? Be specific. Come on, you all been in a faith, word, teaching church for a long time, huh? Financial. Financial you know, a lot of it time, you know, comes down to the money aspect. Do we ever have to really worry about money? No. Do we? No. 
No. Have we been given instruction and wisdom and the power to create wealth? Yes. It's ours, right? Yes. If, we'll, if we'll be in faith, believe the word, it's all in the word. What else have we been given? Provision and what else? Grace, mercy, Grace, mercy love. You're forgetting the love part. His righteousness. We're righteous. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, I still break down and cry. After the putrid life I lived, I still break down and go, oh my gosh, you made me righteous like Jesus in your eyes. Oh, Lord. Freedom. Freedom. That was freedom that Jesus set us free. Now that's some of the things that we have that by faith, they're ours. Because our faith is in God and in His Word and what He's promised. Amen? Amen. It doesn't, man, it doesn't get any gooder than that. And there's a lot more. There's a whole lot more. And we all have a choice to commit to faith and live by faith, to stay in faith, to believe God, or to live in foolishness because that's what the world lives in. They don't know. They're ignorant. Or they choose not to believe because the foolishness is based on unbelief and fear. I, uh, I was uh, reading a, <laughs> I was reading a report by a psychologist who uh, wrote a book, did a, uh, it's quite a, a, a note, quite a, a, I don't want to call it a letter, I don't want to call it a dissertation, but it is, on, he's been studying for years the grooming of society by fear. The society uh, not just our country, but the world, and it's prevalent in our country now, has been groomed to be in fear. And he, he now this is a secular guy, this isn't a believer, you know, and, and what he does is he, he kind of laid out how all this has happened over the years, and of course the coronavirus uh, rising up has been a part of the tool used to groom people to be in fear. Well, fear, you know, is the opposite of faith right? There's no confidence in fear. And fear is irrational. Fear doesn't think. Fear is coupled with unbelief. Fear is a means of control, whether it's control by the devil or control by other people, but it's a way to manipulate. Now, he did this, and when I was reading it, I thought one of the points that he made was when people are groomed to be in fear, they become addicted to fear. Addicted to it. Now, this is all through his practice and all the, the documentation that he was writing. People come, become addicted to fear. That's a lot of what we see now, today. There's a lot of it around. Well, for us, this is where we should be. We should be addicted to faith. That's what God has called us to. Galatians 3, chapter 11, or excuse me, 3, verse 11. Galatians 3, verse 11. Paul writes, quoting Habakkuk. It's in Romans. It's in Hebrews. The just. Now, the just are the righteous. That's anybody that's born again, have been justified or made the just. The just shall live by faith. That means we eat faith, drink faith, sleep faith, think faith, breathe faith, live faith. Everything we do. That's what I'm talking about, about a commitment to faith. It becomes so much a part of our life that we're almost addicted to living in faith. Can't live any other way. Can't see any other way. Can't think any other way. I believe God. I believe God. I believe, I just believe God. Anything other than faith, really, for us, anything, is unbelief or fear. That's not where we want to be. So my thoughts, again, are why not become addicted to faith and live that way in our commitment? Mark 5, 36, when Jesus was on his way with Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue. And I want to tell you that the position of the ruler of the synagogue, he was a big deal. 
I mean, he was a he was a big deal religious guy. And this ruler of the synagogue just found out his daughter died. And you all know the event. Most of you know the event. So Jesus and Jairus are walking along. Now here, I, can get to, I can't imagine a parent going through this. My child just died. Will you come and, come and heal her? Come and raise her up. Come and do something. Now, if you can imagine this, it probably did not look like this. Jesus and Jairus are just kind of meandering along. Well, we'll get there when we get there. It'll be okay. You know, we'll just chit-chat about other things. I could see Jairus going, come on, Jesus, please, let's get there. Come on, let's go. Please, please, please. Come on, here, can you hear me? Can, uh, Jesus, come on, let me push you. Let's run. And out of his mouth, probably not coming faith. Think about it. It probably wasn't anything but worry and fear and doubt. And in verse 36 of chapter 5, Jesus said to him in Mark's gospel, he says, don't be afraid, Jairus. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Most people are trapped in fear. And in that fear, again, is unbelief. It's not faith. Only believe. And it's so simple, isn't it? It's so simple. Only believe. That's all. So don't misplace your faith. Don't put it in fear. Don't put it in irrationality. Don't put your faith... And I, and I know this sounds funky, but don't put your faith in unbelief. Because we do that. Put your faith in God and stay there, stay put. When I was, uh, I want to give you a scenario here, one more. Before I was a pastor and I worked in uh, chemical manufacturing in uh, Nevada and uh, for a lot of years. That's where I was a project manager and, and, uh, I started as a, as a plain old plumber pipe fitter. I went into supervision, and then I went into project management. And um, along those, there was a lot of things that happened along those ways. So I was part of the hazmat team. You all know what a hazmat team is? Well, let me tell you what they do. We were the guys that go in when they have chemical spills or uh, extremely volatile and dangerous gas leaks. And we had those suits, you know, those great big bubble suits and the air packs and the chemical gloves, and they kind of like mittens with five fingers and uh, uh, special boots and things. And we would walk into dangerous atmospheres where sometimes, you know, if you had a tear in your suit or your, your uh, air pack, you know, the pack like the firefighters were, if that leaked, if you got a breath of this stuff, it would kill you. One breath. If you got some of it on you, some of these things were so dangerous and so corrosive and volatile that they would eat right through you. I mean, right now. And you think, oh my gosh. <laughs> but we were trained. And our equipment was good. And we had... We entered these uh, atmospheres a number of times. But you put confidence in your training and confidence in your equipment, and you go and do your job. And I'll tell you, when I was in there, man, I was praying because there's a lot of dangerous things that can happen. But the point is you put confidence in your training and confidence in your equipment. Now, you walk out the door today, and you there's no guarantees, right? Amen. You could walk smack into, God forbid, an auto accident, or um, I don't know, you could have a financial loss instantly. You could have a relationship loss 
instantly. I mean, things could be taken. There could be something happen in some way. There could be that dangerous disease right outside the doors. Are you going to put confidence in your equipment and your training? Or are you going to put confidence in the atmosphere around? What are you going to do? Are you going to be in faith or not? I told you last week about John G. Lake, and he went into the Black Plague, and he didn't have any protection on it. The doctors wondered what was going on. And how do you protect yourself, you and your helper here? You're carrying the dead out, and they're full of the Black Plague, and people are dying like flies. I don't remember what the percentage was, but it was huge. Like a third of the population of that part of Africa died of the Black Plague. And he said, what do you mean what protection? He says, I've got the protection of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which has made me free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8, verse 2. That's what I have. You see, his faith was in God and what God said. And he was committed to faith. So when you go out the door today, you drove here in faith, some of you. Will you be committed to faith? Will you think faith? Will you live by faith? Eat, sleep, breathe, think faith in everything you do. Because how are you going to live is more than a conqueror through him who loves you. How are you going to do that? Be in faith in him and what he did. And, there's, you know, we could go on and on and on with this. Amen? Amen. As long as you stay in faith, you're always going to rise above. I don't care what comes. I could tell you a whole lot of stories about things that have come against me. There's a lot of them. And I, you know, sometimes I feel like when Paul said, and he gives this list of all these things that happened in his life, and I go, oh my gosh. But the bottom line of it is, he says, and out of them all, the Lord delivered me. I feel the same way. Out of them all, he delivered me. But it's by faith. Everything, everything, everything we walk through. So am I making a point here? What's the point? <laughs> Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Commit to faith. Live faith. Live it out. It's really living it out in everything we do. Do you trust in your training, in the word, and the equipment that God has given you, the scriptures he's given you, the faith that he's given you, do you do that? Man, there's nothing you can't conquer. Nothing. I don't care what news and what report comes. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 12, verse 3. Romans 12, verse 3. You don't have to turn there. I'm still refreshing from last week. Romans 12, verse 3, has got us. Everything, if the word's producing seed, everything else is competing with it. Everything, everything in our lives is competing with it. Every craving, every desire, every, everything that we want or see, every you know, materialism, uh, uh, money, uh, all kinds of stuff. Pardon? Anger. Anger. Yeah. So anyway, all these things are competing. They're weeds that have grown up in our minds and our hearts that are competing with the Word of God, that measure of faith. You've got to pull the weeds. That's the cost. If you want to be in the supernatural, you're going to walk in the supernatural. If you want to lay hands on the sick, if you want to, when you pray and you see a financial miracle, when you, you want to multiply loaves and fish for people who have a need, whatever way that might be, you got to get rid of the weeds. You want to see your businesses prosper even now? Yeah, of course now. Anytime. You know, the, the, the Word of God and the promises of God are not limited for what's going on in this goofy world. But we have to commit to faith. And committing to faith means pulling the weeds out that are getting in the way of that measure of faith. Amen? That's the cost. That is the cost. Okay, so the title of this message 
<laughs> it's, the, it's the process of faith. It's the process. Everything has a process. Our lives have a process. When we manufactured chemicals, it was a process. Preparing a sermon is a process. You know, everything has a process. Faith has a process. Just all of a sudden, you just don't bling, the light bulb comes on. Oh, I'm in faith. I'm going to stay in faith. Faith is a process. So here's the process. I'm going to make it real simple. Mark chapter 4, verse 28. Would you go there? Mark 4, verse 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want. I'm, I'm t I want. I crave to live in faith all the time. I'm not successful yet. I'm not 100%, but I'm moving. Amen. Amen. Mark 4, verse 28. For the earth yields crops. I'm going to take this one scripture. I don't have time to expound on anything. The earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. What you're looking at is the process of faith. The process of faith. Let me read it again. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. So starting the process. Here's the beginning. First the blade. Now, when he speaks about, when Jesus is speaking about the earth yields the crops, he's talking about the manifestation that comes from our faith. All right? Right? Are we, are we together here? Okay. The manifestations are the tangible results of our faith. The earth yields crops. First the blade. Here's the process. Galatians 6, verse 7. Galatians 6, verse 7 says, Paul writes, do not be deceived. God is not mocked or made a fool of. For whatever a man or woman sows, this they will also reap. Okay, fundamental biblical principle for life. Whatever you sow, you reap. When you speak, when you do, what you think on, what you're doing is you're sowing seed, right? You're sowing seed. Your actions, your thoughts, your words, you're sowing seed. If you read the Word, and you're reading, and you're studying, and you're gleaning from the Word, you're sowing seed into you. Now, usually we're sowing it outside. But a lot of times, we're also sowing into us. So what are we sowing? Are we sowing, first the blade, are we sowing seeds of faith in ourselves? Are we? You have, this is a purposeful thing. Whatever you plant in you is going to grow. Whatever you, whatever you watch, whatever you listen to, whatever you think on, whatever you participate in, whatever you give yourself to, you're planting seed in you. You're planting seed in your life, in the earth, so to speak, according to the Scripture. Now, how do you sow seeds of faith in your life? Go ahead. Come on. Speak the word. What else? How do you sow? If I was going to sow a seed of faith, how would I do it to get this in me? How would I plant that seed? Hmm? Say it again. Desire. The Got to have the desire. How do I plant the seed? How do I do it? What physical thing do I do? What, 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 what do I do to plant the seed? Pray. What else? Hmm? Come on, farmers. Spiritual farmers here. Pardon? Read the Bible. What else? 
planting seed. What else? Come on, how do you plant seed? How do you plant the seeds of faith? I want you to think about this. Think, 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 think. Don't just take what I say. Think, 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 think. This is the whole point of, a, you know, of doing a message is to get us to think about the reality of what we have. Faith, it's ours. We got it. There's nothing that we can't do that God can do. Nothing. We have to do it. Got to do it. Plant the seeds. That's part of the practical part. What else? How else do you plant the seed? Decoration. Pardon? Decoration. Decoration. Declare. Oh, declaration. Declare it. Our speaking, our words. Yeah. Developing trust. Anything else? You got it. I'm th- hearing the Lord, and the coupler with that is doing what He says. <laughs> you can't just hear and not do. Okay, then you just got ears to hear. Hearing, hearing, hearing means you're coupling this with actually doing something, not just hearing. Anything else? Discipline. Being disciplined. Good. Seeds of faith. Faith requires discipline. Is that it? Oh, they'll come. (laughs) Patience and endurance will come. We'll get into that next week. Yeah, they'll come. Sowing seeds of faith. I want you to think about that, okay? So when somebody says, hey, you know, I've I've, uh, been exposed to this, or I've done this, or something, something crashed and burned in their life, Should it try to come on you? Are you sowing seeds of faith? Contrary. Whatever that might be. For you and for your life. Most people, most believers, not you, most believers don't do this. You will. So step two, the continuation of the process, here we go, is then the head. Okay? First the seed starts, gets planted in the ground, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Carl. Seed gets planted, and the blade comes up out of the seed, and then comes the blade, or excuse me, the head. And the head, now the seed's pretty much disintegrated, and the roots are forming, and they're beginning to go and take root in the earth, and they're gathering uh, nourishment, and they're gathering, they're getting nurtured, and and the head is beginning to show. It's maturing, and what the seed has done is get this going. And this process is happening of growth or increase, if you want to call it this, in faith. Because all the weeding has been done around the seed that's been planted. So the process continues, then the head. Romans 10, 17, and somebody said this earlier. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't know how many believers I've known in my life, lots of them, who don't get into the word. Don't, get, don't read the word. Don't listen to the word. Don't hear the word. Don't know the word. And consequently, when something happens, or when they have something that they'd really like to get to, and it's a godly thing, you know they got nothing to stand on. Nothing. And wondering why God's not doing this for them. They have no faith. They don't believe. They don't even know him. You know, you can't know God. Listen to me. You cannot know our God. You cannot know our Jesus and the Holy Spirit if you do not know the word. You can't know him. He is his word. His word is him. He is the living word. Jesus The Father, the author of the Word. Jesus, the living Word, and the Holy Spirit. The one who quickens the Word to us. You won't know Him. And the head of the seed won't come up unless you get to where you hear the Word. Now, this isn't just hearing like, okay, I'm hearing, you know. No, this is actually active listening. (laughs) Even when you're reading, I'm actively listening to you, Lord. I'm hearing you. What are you saying to me? It's alive. It's for me. 
It's where our revelation comes. It's where our understanding comes. And it's where faith comes. Because faith, when we know God is, when we, we know God is opening things up to us in his word, faith rises up. He's so much bigger than all this nonsense going on around us. And we put so much credence and credibility in the government and the world and the economy. And the, oh yeah, things are, I mean, for the world, they're not good. What has changed for us? This is a trick question. <laughs> Anything? No, nothing. Are the promises of God in Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 1.20, are they still there? Is it still in the Word? Of course it is. Because he said in Malachi 3, 6, he said, I am God and I don't change. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing's changed. It's not changed for us. It's not changed for us. But when Jesus returns, will he really find faith on the earth? That's why this is so important. Don't lose sight of faith. So the culmination of the process, I need to get finished up. The culmination of the process is after the blade, seeds planted, after the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Now I'm going to go back to Luke chapter 17, verse 6. So the Lord said, after the disciples said, increase our faith, please. The Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed. There we go, that seed again. You can say out of your mouth by faith and confidence. Well, that's weird, huh? Say this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. Now who said that? Is it in the word? Is it the word? So when he said it, he wasn't kidding, right? So the word of God says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, I don't know what kind of situations you've got going right now. Some of you have some big stuff. Even in our smaller than normal group here today. If you say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, it would obey you. If you, if, here's the qualifier, if you have faith as a mustard seed. How do you get faith? First the blade, the process, then the head, then the full grain in the head, right? You're developing faith. You're really digging out the weeds and you're increasing. You're allowing this seed that was put in you, this measure of faith, to really work. So you can say to something, and this is just one example, move, go, produce, come in, whatever it might be, die, and it would obey you. That's all. That's the culmination of the process. That is how this works. You know, the Lord never wanted to make this stuff complicated. I know that I need simple. My messages are simple. I need to hear simple, and I need to hear practical. I need to hear the application of the word. We can hear testimony. You know, we had four healing testimonies last week after church, and they were, we had uh, somebody was healed of what they thought was cancer in the nose, um, uh, food poisoning, gone instantly, a lot of nausea there. Uh, we had, and actually these are all on video, we had um, a knee was healed instantly, couldn't walk, and then walked all over the place. 
prayed for someone with a uh, irregular heartbeat, and they went and got a test. The test didn't prove it yet, but they haven't finished with their um, assignment. That's part of the practical part of their faith. I expect that to be done. Now, those were simple healings. Healing is not a big deal to the Lord. But you, you can live on testimonies, and you hear testimonies all day long. I love testimonies because they inspire faith. But you can't live on them. Where we live and where faith really grows is from the Word. It is from the Word of God. That is our foundation. Believing God comes from knowing Him and knowing His Word. That's how we get to where that's how we get to where the full grain in the head is and we see the tangible results. No unbelief. No weeds to pull. It's the process that produces the results of our faith. Is it okay if I take two more minutes? Well, you know what? If you got to go, this is really our time to wrap, but I want to take couple more minutes and read this to you. Would you go to Mark chapter 9? Or excuse me, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, real quick. Matthew chapter 9. Are you there? Okay. Verse 27. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. They were seeking the word. And Jesus said to them, now listen to this. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Whoa, wait a minute. Okay, so when the Lord promises something, this living word promises something. It's the same thing they faced. Do you believe I'm able to do this? Do you? Now, you're the only ones that know whether you really believe it or whether you don't. You can shake your head, yes. I've had people tell me that in the healing lines. Sure, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. They don't believe squat. <laughs> They've either been in pain so long, they, you know, they're, they're, just, they're trying hard or they're working at it or whatever it might be. I've had, you know, seen people, we prayed and gotten financial breakthroughs that are, are unbelievable, but they're believable. Because by faith, and all kinds of other things. I don't have time to go into the, all of them. Do you really believe he's able to do that? I don't care what it is in your life. Whatever's missing, whatever's there, whatever needs to change, whatever needs to move, whatever it is. And I know you can all think of something right now, one thing. Do you believe he's able to do it? Or do you believe that he's already done it through his cross and burial and resurrection. For us, that's where it happened. Do you believe it? And so, they said to him, yes, Lord. That was it. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, listen to me, according to your faith, your faith, wherever your faith is at. No condemnation, but according to your faith, you said you believed me. Okay. Then let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. It's impossible. Isn't it? Luke one thirty seven. with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing. Nothing is out of this realm for you and me. If you will pull the weeds out of your life and commit to faith, get the word in you. Get, I mean, really get him in you. You can't will faith. You can't, like, by a force of will, make that happen. You can't reason it out. You have to simply believe. Amen? Amen. Will you stand with me?